So we're going to um, take uh, our time to get comfortable on our seated position. So I have a blanket right under my seat. So you can have a block, a blanket under your tailbone. We're not going to uh, stay here for too long, just to ground. So let us just begin by sitting tall. Close your eyes, relax your shoulders back and down. I'm just gonna turn down this volume here. And just check your posture, make sure that you balance the weight on left and right, that your shoulders are right above the hips. Sometimes we have the tendency to lean forward or back. And try to send your tailbone upward. So you have a little bit of an arch on your lower back. Maybe close your eyes and slightly tuck your chin onto your chest. And so you feel a gentle elongation on the back of the neck. Soften your hands. You can press your palms down on your legs. If you need just to ground and just be present. If today, for whatever reason you feel you need extra energy, you can flip your palms up as a gesture of welcoming that energy, that pranic flow. Whatever works, release your muscles, but without collapsing. So you do want to have a, just a gentle engagement on the center of your core. It's like if you were pressing the navel in towards the spine, but not so much that it actually, that it blocks your breath. So there is a little bit of um, engagement but also there is softness, especially on the inhalation, you will allow the navel to move away from the spine. And every time you exhale with intention, bring it in and maybe slightly up, like if you were trying to tuck your navel underneath your rib cage. And again, soften as you inhale without letting your spine collapse and throw your navel in. We're going to take a couple of long deep breaths here. And just being really aware where the breath maybe stops. And you may focus on that area. If you find sometimes if breath gets stuck at the upper chest, sometimes just by the rib cage, and it's hard to send it down into the belly. So pay attention if that is the case today. Keep your facial muscles relaxed. So we're going to have a cleansing practice. Tomorrow it is a uh, new moon. And remember new moon puts us in that mindset of new beginnings, but to be able to start something new, we just really wanna make sure that we release all that stagnant energy. So it is a pranic hatha class a lot of um, free del katap um, exercises, pranayamas, and you do what you can. When we get into the movements, into the breaths, if you have high blood pressure, heart condition, eye pressure, you're going to adjust to your own pace. You don't have to go really fast. Let's make sure it feels right. And with that, we're gonna take three more breaths, being very aware of what the body's saying, if there's any sensations on your knees, hips or shoulders, or any other part of the body. And maybe noticing the flow of prana, moving a little bit deeper this time, making sure you empty your lungs at the bottom of the exhalation. Last breath. Tuck your chin onto your chest when you finish that third exhalation and open your eyes. Gaze forward and relax your shoulders back and down. Lean back, extend your legs and shake the tension up. You can use your blanket to pad your knees. We're gonna go ahead and go onto our fours for tabletop position. So once you get onto your tabletop, you want to Find that place where you can stack your joints. 
make sure that you're connecting all of your knuckles, your thumbs are pointing towards each other, your middle fingers might be pointing forward, and the eyes of the elbows also face forward. So you get that external rotation of your shoulder, but without forcing, make sure this is not bothering your wrists. Now, when you're ready, open, um, not open, send your tailbone up, drop your belly, open your chest and look up. And on your next exhalation, tuck your tailbone round your back and let your head dangle. We're gonna do a few of those at the pace that feels right for you. And exhale in, inhale into cow stretch, opening your chest, dropping the belly and exhale round. Press the top of the feet and the shins onto the floor. And we may start speeding up if that feels all right in the body. Inhale, cow, exhale, cat. Try to start the movement from your pelvis. I'm going to start moving at my head so my um, the sound is not coming and going. But if it doesn't feel good for you to move your head, you can stay like I am right now, keeping the gaze in between the hands and continue to move your pelvis and your spine all the way to your thoracic spine, letting your cervical spine neutral. Those of you who feel comfortable to speed up, you may go a little bit faster. You're gonna start building up that heat. Think about the navel moving in like we did at the beginning of the practice on the exhalation. Three more. And come back to center. You may sit back on your heels, rest your forehead on the floor or stack your hands and rest your forehead down on your hands maybe fist or flat hands, whatever works. Notice your heartbeat and notice your breath. We're gonna take one more breath here, full deep breath. And on the next inhalation, bring your hands under the shoulders. And as we exhale, come up onto your tabletop position once again. From tabletop, this time you're gonna draw your navel in, extend your right leg back and inhale, open your chest, look up, maybe the leg goes up so you feel that extension through the hip flexor on the right side. You can point or flex your foot, that really doesn't matter here. Just try not to let your hip go open. Gaze maybe goes up depending on the neck, otherwise keep your gaze between the hands. And on the next exhalation, knee towards the forehead, round your back. And we'll do it again. Inhale, extend. Feel that extension, bring your leg as high up as it feels right. Your gaze can be up if your neck allows. And as you exhale, squeeze all the air out, bring your knee to the forehead. I'm gonna watch you for a little bit. Three more, inhale, open. And exhale, forehead to knee, round in the back. Two more, inhale, extend that leg without opening the hip. Exhale, round your back. Last one, inhale, open, you may stay and breathe. Now, if it works for you, you may lift the left arm and extend it forward. Right leg, left arm, so the opposite leg. So if you lifted the left leg, so your opposite hand will go up. Your gaze maybe goes forward towards your thumb, your left thumb or whichever you have at the front. Watch for your hip, watch for your knee. And on your next exhalation, release your hand down, knee down, adjust your weight, sit back on your heels, open your knees, press your elbows onto the floor and rotate your wrists. And when you are ready, find your way onto the version that works for you of your child's pose. So you can stack your hands 
or bring your hands by your feet, palms facing up if your forehead touches the floor with no problem. Notice your heartbeat and breath and don't let your mind go away. We're gonna take one more breath here, full deep breath. And on the next inhalation, hands under the shoulders and on the exhalation, slowly and mindfully, we bring ourselves back up onto tabletop position. Walk your hands to the front, bring your knees just enough together. So you wanna have about a fist distance between the knees. And when you are ready, extend that left leg back. And we first, before we start with the movement, we're gonna measure and see how far up we can take that leg without opening the hip. And on the exhalation, round your back and bring your forehead towards the knee. And then again, inhale, extend, maybe gaze up. And on the exhalation, forehead to knee. We're gonna do three more like that. Moving slowly and mindfully, connecting all of the knuckles onto the floor, eyes of the elbows face forward. And on the third round, keep your leg extended, hold and breathe. And if it works for you, the opposite arm reaches forward. If the neck allows, your gaze goes towards your thumb. If that is a no-no for, uh, for your neck, just keep your gaze down. Make sure that your bottom hand is flat on the floor so you're not curling your fingers. So this is going to protect your hands, your wrists. And you're welcome to keep your toes on the floor. You don't need to lift the leg if that doesn't feel right. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath, and very mindfully and with control, bring your hand down, knee down, knees together, I mean apart, sit back on your heels, elbows to the floor, and once again, we are going to release the wrist, so rotate both ways. Once you are ready, find your forehead maybe on your stack hands, fist, or straight down onto the floor for your version of child's pose. Don't let your mind wander. We'll take a few moments here. Bring your hands under the shoulders as you inhale. And as you exhale, push yourself up. Bring your knees wide apart. Depending on your hips, you may bring them just a little bit apart. Some of you might bring them mat width apart. Send your tailbone back. So try not to tuck it. And then from here, extend your arms towards the front just enough so that you can feel that extension through your sides. So we're going to either stay here, if there is no concern with your hips, with your knees, we're gonna bring that right arm up on the inhalation. And on the exhalation, bring your hands right in between the left arm, sink onto the floor, bringing your temple, right temple on the ground. So we're not going on to tabletop. We are doing this thread the needle from a wide knee child's pose. So you're gonna stay down and feel that stimulation on the right side of your body. So your right hand is towards the left side of the mat under your arm, threading that needle. And we stay down, head down, if that's okay with the neck. And we're gonna stay here and breathe. Send the breath into the right side of your body, stimulating the intestines. This is a great way just to really stimulate the digestive system. If we, are, um, if we struggle with constipation, this one will really help to get things moving. You do want to use your breath to expand into the right side. And when you exhale, let your body empty completely. Don't hold any breath, any part of your breath. 
So when you think about sending your breath into the right side of your body, we're working with a wind that is known or the Vayu is known as Samana. Samana Vayu, this wind, it's expansive and it's at the level of the Manipura Chakra or the solar plexus. This is an energizing ener uh, energy, was an ener energizing uh, force that moves um, hor horizontally along the, the Manipura Chakra. So you might feel that expansion into the rib cage. We're gonna take two more breaths here. If your left arm is extended towards the top of the mat, very slowly and mindfully, we're gonna inhale the hand, left hand under the shoulder. And on the exhale, push yourself up, bringing your hands both on the floor, adjust your posture, maybe walk your hands slightly forward, feel the stretch through the sides of the body. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So when you are ready, bring the left arm up on your inhalation, maybe rotate your torso. And as you exhale, bring that left hand underneath the right, fingertips towards the right side of the mat, press your elbow on the floor, and maybe bring your temple, left temple on the ground. And now we're going to focus on the left side of the body, really expanding into the left rib cage. Softening through your hips. Depending on your, uh, what your, what's going on today with your body, if it works for you at the top of the inhalation, when you feel that expansion, you may elongate that part. Almost like kumbaka, but we're not holding per se. Like you're not throw, closing up the breath. Just think about elongating a bit more that inhalation so that you can get that samana energy moving a little bit more, this expansive energy. We're gonna take three more breaths here. Being very mindful and careful with the neck, just like we went in, we come out and engage your arms, put weight on them, forearms, and then lift, extend your arm to the front, walk your hands a little bit higher, and then with control, when you are ready, bring yourself onto your tabletop position, shifting your weight forward and bringing your knees closer together. If there is high blood pressure, you don't wanna go up on your downward dog, stay here, curl the right toes under as you extend your leg back and press your heel back. So you still get that extension of the Achilles tendon, the hamstring, keep your back neutral. And then you do the same thing on the other side and you can just count your breaths on each side and repeat if needed. Those of you who want to come up on downward facing dog from tabletop position, draw your navel in. Just think about the arch on your lower back. And when you're ready, curl the toes under, pick up the knees and push your chest towards the thighs. At the same time, while you bring your hips towards the sky. Think about sending your tailbone up, push the hands down and forward. And just like we did on our tabletop position, you want to connect all of your knuckles to the ground. You want the eyes of the elbows to face forward and you want to rotate your shoulders externally. So even though the eyes of the elbows will not face forward for many of us, just that's the direction you're taking them. So that will help to bring your upper back out to the side. So you're, you want a broad upper back, maybe even think about hollowing up your chest and your armpits, relax your neck, move your head, yes, move it, no, and maybe walk it out here. Maybe shift the weight to one heel, press it down onto the floor while you bend the opposite knee and do the same thing on the other side, shifting. 
but just getting a nice massage through your feet, your hamstrings. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath, come back to center and take your chest closer to the thighs, getting that big stretch on the back body. With control on your next inhalation, walk your hands back towards your feet. You may put your blanket out of the way. Have about fist distance between the knees and the toes. Bend your knees enough so that you can bring your chest a little higher and your head even higher than the chest. Make sure your knees are not touching. Keep them pointing straight ahead so about a fist distance is okay. You can even measure. Keep drawing your navel in. Keep drawing your shoulders into their sockets. Activate your feet so your toes are lifted. The breath is flowing. And just like we did at the beginning of the practice in Sukhasana, where your navel is gently pressing in, not enough to restrict the breath, but enough to protect your lower back. And when you're ready on your next inhalation, walk your hands up the legs, come up onto an upright position. And on the exhale, rotate your shoulders back and down, palms face forward, close your eyes for a few moments and observe. Tuck your chin onto your chest, open your eyes, soften your posture and walk it out. So you may get some water. We're gonna work at the center of the mat. Actually, I'm going to get some water as well. And we're going to be facing the long end of the mat. Walk your feet wide apart and then turn your toes out to the sides, just, just as much as it feels right for your hips and for your knees. Then bend the knees and make sure that your kneecaps, the center of your kneecaps are pointing at the center of your feet. So your second toe, it's right ne next to your um, big toe. Sink a little deeper onto this goddess pose. You can use your hands to push your knees towards the pinkies because most likely they're coming inwards. So we don't want that. We want that external rotation of the hips and that extension through the groin area. But don't overdo it. Feet are active. Bring your arms out to the sides, palms facing up, bend the elbows and keep the bend at the, uh, at the wrists. Maybe go on to Gyan Mudra, goddess arms. Maybe go a little bit lower, you don't have to. Keep your glutes engaged. Now inhale through your nostrils. And as you exhale, rotate your torso to the right. Inhale to center and to the left. Inhale. Make sure you're not feeling your knees as you continue to rotate with every exhalation. To avoid that, you don't rotate so far because if you take your hip with you, you're gonna start torquing your knee. So it's important that your pelvis stays facing forward. That is no goal of looking a certain way. Make sure this feels all right. Now, if your neck and shoulders allow, we're going to keep those elbows at the level of the shoulders. Find a pace that works for you. And those of you, who would like to go into the cleansing breath. We're gonna do one more towards the left. You can keep with that speed or inhale to center and to when you go to the right, inhale and inhale. 
you can do the sound ha. Huh. Remember the sound ha. Huh. It stimulates your lymphatic system. It helps to engage the lymph nodes of the belly. Every time you say ha, huh, you think about pressing your navel in. Ha, huh. huh. ha. Like in martial arts, when you're getting the strength right from your belly, the sound actually comes from the belly, not from your throat. And you don't have to go fast. You can continue to go slower if you want to. Ha, ha, ha. Those knees are still bent. One more. Come back to center from the left. Release your arms. Rotate your shoulders back and down. Extend your knees. Turn your left toes in. So towards the uh, towards in. <laughs> and your right toes are going to be facing straight towards the short end of the mat. Maybe you want to make sure that the back arch is in line with your front heel. Balance your hips, relax your shoulders, bring your arms at a T position as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend your right knee, making sure that the knee never passes the ankle. The shoulders might try to come up. We're gonna do our very best to retract them, bring them in towards their sockets and make sure your blades are also active. The blades move inwards and then down. Look down at your knee, make sure it's pointing straight ahead. Sometimes the knee wants to come in and out. If you're torquing your knee, your back knee, you can turn your toes in even more. So that will internally rotate your hip and you will, um, you will ease on that knee. Breathe deeply. Maybe go a little farther down if you want more challenge. If you already did too much, come up a little. That's okay too. And we'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. On the next inhalation, bring your left arm down and exhale, pivot the back foot and bring your arm forward. Inhale deeply here. And as we exhale, we're gonna shift the weight forward and bring the knee up. Hands together at the center of the heart. And open your left knee out to the left and bring your foot sole against your inner leg. So anywhere along the leg except the knee. Breathe deeply. Engage your glutes, find your drishti. On the next inhalation, bring your knee forward. And on the exhale, step back, arms to the front. And you wanna go onto the ball of the back foot, shoulders into their sockets. On the next inhalation, bring your left arm down. And as you exhale, pivot the back foot, turn towards the long end of the mat, palms facing up once again, goddess arms, adjust your feet. Gyan mudra maybe, you don't have to. Don't let your tailbone go back, try to keep your hip bones and pubic bone perpendicular to the floor, it's important. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. On your next inhalation, bring your arms at a T position. Gonna close your hands into fists, extend your index and your middle finger for peace sign, prana mudra. Lengthen through the spine, press the crown of the head up, maybe go a little bit deeper, inhale here. And as you exhale, side bend to your right. Inhale. And to the left, exhale. Find your rhythm. Keep 
keep those feet active, lift the toes. You don't have to sink too deep onto your uh, goddess squat. You can come a little higher if uh, something is saying not enough or not, uh, not that much, please listen to your body. If it works for you, the next time we come to the center from the left, we're gonna speed up. You don't have to. And maybe, ha, 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 right and left come back to center when you're ready inhale and as you exhale extend your legs release your hands we're going to turn the left toes in uh, right toes in left toes go out to the left so they match the short end of the mat once again balance your hips pubic bone slightly forward t position of the arms bend the left knee and keep your gaze on the left hand maybe Breathe deeply. Any adjustments that you need to make at this point, please make sure that your knees and your hips feel okay. And there is no problem if your back foot is turned in. That will ensure that your left hip, uh, your right hip is also in and your knee is not gonna get caught up in the middle. Where is that left knee pointing at? You want it to be pointing straight ahead and you don't want it moving in or out. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. And on your next inhalation, bring your right arm down. And as you exhale, pivot the back, uh, pivot, Pivot the back foot and turn it towards the left so that your right arm comes forward. Once again, retract your blades. We're here on this high lunge position. We'll take one more breath, full deep breath. And with control on the next exhalation, take a step towards the front and bring your knee up. Hands in Namaste. Let your knee go out to the side for three poses. Don't let your mind wander. Find your drishti. Your right knee is pushing out to the right, but it's not taking your pelvis with it. Avoid your knee level. Don't press your knee towards the side. It's important. The next time we inhale very slowly and with control, we're gonna bring that right knee forward and exhale, big step back with the right foot. Extend your arms and we go again onto our high lunge. Next time we inhale, we release the right arm down and on the exhalation, turn towards the center of the mat. Once again, for goddess pose, bend the elbows, Gyan Mudra, shoulders down. Breathe here. You may go a little farther down. You don't have to lift the toes if that is okay. And try to put the weight onto the outer edges of your feet. That will take your knees out. You'll get a deeper extension through your groin. One more breath. Inhale, extend, exhale, arms down, toes forward, heel to your feet closer together, walk it out, shoulders back and down, shake the tension off your feet. Now, the next one, I'm gonna do it sideways, you don't have to go sideways, just so you see the position of my feet. You want to find uh, Tadasana, so bottom fist distance between the toes, and your heels slightly wider apart. And then bring your right foot back and 
press the top of the foot onto the floor. And then maybe, maybe we start shifting the weight and moving the foot side to side. If you need to go by the wall or hold onto the chair, you can do that. Try to keep your pelvis neutral so you have a gentle arch on your lower back, but it's not too deep. And when you are ready with control, bring your foot back to center, release it down and walk it out. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So when you're ready, find your Tadasana, balance your hips and step back with your left foot, curl the toes under. Once you find your balance, you're gonna start stretching that left foot side to side once again. Make sure your breath is flowing. Don't let your hips sink to the side. Keep your hips square to the floor. Come back to center when you're ready. Release your foot and walk it out and shake the tension off. Awesome. Now from here, have your feet just a little bit wider than Tadasana. Just make sure that it feels right. And then lift your knees and let your feet go down. So you will see what's the most comfortable um, standing position you have. Do not worry too much about toes in. In fact, bend your knees. And if your knees are collapsing in, you need to adjust your feet so that your knees and your toes are pointing, pointing on the same direction. It's important. So that's what we're going with. Toes and knees pointing on the same direction. Then bend your knees and bounce. And let your arms go. So I'm doing it sideways so you can see. So we're gonna shift to side to side. And then we return to center, bouncing both knees. Now we're gonna do the simple breath. Inhale, arms forward. Exhale, arms out. Inhale, arms up, bending the knees, then extending. And exhale, arms swing down and back. Belly goes towards the thighs, head doesn't drop. Inhale, arms forward, extend your legs. Exhale, bounce the knees, arms out. Inhale, bounce your knees, arms up. Exhale, down, stay down. And again, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And you're going to find once again, the pace that works for you. If there is no concern with high pressure or high blood pressure or heart condition, we're going to do three inhalations for one full exhalation. And it goes like this, inhale, 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 exhale. It's one third, two thirds, three thirds of lung capacity and exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale. Make sure this feels all right. If you start feeling lightheaded, don't keep going or slow down or do inhale and exhale and do it slowly. Breath of joy helps to stimulate the lymphatic system. This is a very cleansing breathing exercise. Two more. Last one, inhale all the way up, stay, and exhale, hands to namaste. Maybe if you're not dizzy, close your eyes and observe. Notice the heartbeat, notice the breath.
when you already open your eyes, walk it out, release your posture, walk towards the back of the mat, no fancy way, find your way down onto your back, I mean, no, onto your child's pose. You wanna bring your knees closer together if that's okay with your body. Maybe stack your fists, rest your forehead down. So we have been doing knees apart, child's pose. Now we're gonna try it with the knees touching. This is going to round the spine, create space between each vertebrae. Don't let your mind go away. Watch the breath, adjust if needed. Bring your hands under the shoulders as you inhale. And as you exhale, slowly with control, push yourself up. So you have a blanket. You can use your blanket for under your knees. Or if you have any concerns with your ankles, you could also place a blanket right at the curvature of the ankles, just so that you're not upsetting. And if you have double blanket and you want to do both, you're welcome to do both. Sit back. And notice sometimes by doing this adjustment of the, of the blanket, it's enough for us to comfortably sit on the heels. Totally depends on your body. Do the adjustment, please. We'll take a few moments here in Vajrasana or Thunderbolt posture, also known as Japanese. Bring your hands together at the center of the heart. We'll take a few moments. Notice the heartbeat, notice the breath. We'll take two more breaths here. When you are ready, open your eyes and bring your palms to face forward. So your palms are at the level of your shoulders. Elbows are in towards the body. Then you're going to bring your middle finger and ring finger in towards the center of your palm. If this bothers your wrist or your forearm, stay with your palms extended, your fingers extended. Otherwise, we're going into Adler Mudra. This stimulates the lymphatic system as well. It helps the fluid just to move. Now, when you inhale, bring your arms up, straight up and exhale, arms straight down. Elbows are close to the rib cage, like if you're gently pressing in, but without hurting, without overdoing it, okay? Now inhale, palms out, and exhale back in. And inhale up, exhale down. Inhale out, exhale in, and... Find your rhythm, Bastrika Pranayama. It's very cleansing. You do want to make sure that the energy is just at the belly and upwards. Think about the exhalation, like that energy that goes out. We're working with Udana Vayu, the energy that goes a little bit higher into the chest or the Anahata Chakra, into the throat and into the third eye. Find that space, um, that speed, sorry, that works for you. Udana Bayu helps to nourish your neck, your brain. It goes all the way up into your Sahasrara Chakra or your Crown Chakra. 
It's great for developing our intuition and to clear our minds so we can set intentions for this new, new times that are ahead of us, new beginnings. If you need to change your seated position, you do that. Watch for the knees. Three more. And inhale up. Breathe slowly out. Inhale up, breathe slowly out. Inhale up, maybe fingertips higher. Rib cage away from the hips. And exhale, palms together, back to the center of the heart, shoulders back and down. You may tuck your chin onto your chest and move it across the collarbone side to side. Come back to center. If Japanese uh, seated position works for you to stay and observe, uh, and observe, you can stay here. If you need to go into your sukhasana or cross-legged position, you're welcome to do that as well. Just make sure it feels right for you. Don't let your mind wander. Now to take advantage of this energy that we built upwards, we're going to work with a mudra gonna bring your hands into, just interlace your fingers and then extend your index and your thumbs. Like, I don't wanna say a gun, but I don't know what else to say. And then you open like an almond shape and you're gonna flip that almond shape against your body. So you want it to be right below the sternum. If this makes your shoulders round forward, see if you can release your shoulders back and down, retract your blades and push your elbows back. If that bothers your wrist, your hands or anywhere in your body, flip your mudra so your pointers are forward. Like this or like this, forward or in or up. Check what works for your shoulders, elbows and wrists. And then observe your breath, Uttara Vayu Mudra. Uttara Vayu Mudra sends the energy from the base of the spine and all the way up into the crown of the head, onto the crown chakra, yes. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. On your next inhalation, open your eyes, release your mudra, and exhale, relax your shoulders back and down. Walk towards the front of the mat, find your way onto your tabletop. You may take your blanket if it's under your feet, out of the way. And from your tabletop, we'll do some cat cows. At your own pace, no need to go fast. And when you are ready, come back to center. From tabletop, walk your hands to the front about one hand distance forward or six inches forward. Then shift the weight to the front so that your shoulders are right over your wrists. Connect all of your knuckles, you're almost on a half plank. 
Now, when you're ready, slowly and with control, start bringing your hips down. Make sure this is not bothering your lower back. If so, stay at the point where it feels right. If you have a deep back bend, you may release your pubic bone onto the floor. Micro bend the elbows, adjust your shoulders into their sockets. Bend the elbows a bit more if you can and bring your gaze forward or up. Breathe deeply. On the next exhalation, press your pubic bone down, gaze between the hands, push back. Bring your weight all the way back to the heels. Your knees can be slightly apart, not too much. So we want that roundness of the back as we sit back on our child's pose. Maybe rest your elbows onto the floor. Maybe stack your hands or fists under the forehead. If your forehead goes down to the floor comfortably, you may bring your hands by your feet, palms facing up. Observe. Let us take one more breath here, full deep breath. And very mindfully as you inhale next, bring your hands under the shoulders and as you exhale, push yourself up. If you like to go into a downward dog before we go onto our backs, you're welcome to do that. From tabletop, curl the toes under, draw your navel in, push the mat away, and then lift onto your downward dog. If you are not into downward dog right now, you don't wanna go there, oh, you all went. Okay, so we, <laughs> we take a few moments here on downward dog. You can walk it out if you want, just to get some nice stretch through your feet after being on that Japanese position. We just get the opposite stretch, the counter stretch. And then when you are ready, bring your knees onto the floor, taking your time. And we're going to transition onto the back slowly. No fancy way, just find your way onto your back. You're welcome to have your blanket under your head if you like. Or not, you can have a block as well under your back uh, or under your, sorry, under your head. Extend your legs, release your hands. And we'll take a few moments here. It's really allowing the prana, the values to integrate into our energetic field or our prana maya kosha, the energy body. Notice the quality of your breath. If there are any stretches that your body needs, a spinal twist or swinging your knees side to side or hugging them and rocking side to side or whatever it is that your body wants, you can go for it now. You can do all of them or a happy baby holding onto the big toes or the edges of your feet rocking side to side. And so it really depends what, what's the need for today. And when you are done of your stretches, take your time, there is no rush. You're gonna find your way onto this restful position where you bring your foot tools to the ground, walk them mat width apart, and then roll the weight onto the inner edges of your feet, maybe tuck your tailbone so that you release your lumbar spine on the floor. Let your knees hold one another at the center Bring your left hand onto your heart or at a, at a heart uh, level and your right hand rested on your belly or on the side of your belly. So you want your elbows on the floor 
We don't want to be holding any tension on the upper body. Maybe tuck your chin onto your chest so you elongate the back of the neck. Relax your feet. Remember you're rolling the weight on the inner edges of the feet so that there is no hyperextension on your ankles. And then watch the risings and fallings of your body as your hands move at the pace of the breath. when you are ready. Keep your hands where they are. Continue working with your prana. Heel to your feet together. Let your foot soles touch and allow your knees to flare. You can use your right hand to me measure the top of your pelvis so you want it parallel to the floor, your hip bones and your pubic bone. And then continue to breathe deeply. Now the lower back arch is showing up. Don't let the rib cage pop forward. Keep it touching the floor. So your lower back does have a gentle arch, but your upper back is grounded. On your next breath, bring your knees up and extend your legs onto the mat for your Shavasana. Release your hands down by your sides, maybe at an A-frame, and just observe your breath. And you might notice the energy flowing through your hands. Maybe you even notice the energy on your feet, your legs, as the blood rushes down to them. This energy that goes from the center of the body and into the limbs and into the upper body is like, a, imagine a star. It's called Vyana Vayu. This wind of energy moves from the core up outwards towards the hands, the legs, the crown of the head, and down towards the base of the spine. This is also the energy that we radiate or that is connected with our energetic field known as the aura. I'm just really working with that prana flow. We're going to take one more breath here, full deep breath. And when you're ready, wiggle your toes. Move your feet side to side. Wiggle your fingers. Bring your legs closer together. Extend your arms at a T position or overhead and tense and stretch every corner of your body. Tight, tight, tight. Prune face. Exhale, release. And we'll do it again. Inhale deeply and stretch and tense and squeeze tight, tight, tight. Whatever it is that we're not going to take with us into the next cycle, we're going to put it into the hands. And when we're ready, we release. Open the hands and let it go. And we'll do it one last time. Inhale deeply and stretch and tense and squeeze. Exhale, release. 
move on to your favorite side when you're ready. Gonna take a few moments here, just checking in with the breath. Notice your heartbeat. And you may use your top hand to slowly help yourself up on your next exhalation. So find a comfortable seated position. You can use a blanket. You can bring one leg in front of the other, crossing them. You can bring one leg on top of the other. Whichever leg position you choose, you just want a neutral pelvis and a neutral spine. Bring your hands together in namaste position. Relax your face and relax your jaw. If there is anything else that you need to release, just set the intention to let it go. We're going to do a final gesture to integrate all five values, all five winds of energy. Once we get into our last mantra, our OM, we're going to start with Metta Mantra. You may repeat if you like, you can just listen. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe. May I be brave. May I live in peace. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you be brave. May you live in peace. May all be happy. May all be healthy. May all be safe. May all be brave. May all live in peace. Inhale through your nostrils, expand. And through your nostrils, exhale. Inhale to Om. Notice. Tuck your chin on your chest, open your eyes, gaze forward, drop your hands, getting into that energy. Viana, shake off, shake off. Thank you so much, Yoginis. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.